Hey everybody, welcome back to another brand new release preview video. And today we are opening up a hobby box of 2019 Tops Update, the long awaited update series with tons of hype um, surrounding it. We're gonna open this up and show you exactly what you can kind of expect from a hobby box in case you wanna run out to your local card store and pick one of these bad boys up. So let's take a look at the packaging first. You got Clayton Kershaw and Sandy Koufax on the top. And uh, it says there's one autograph or relic in every box. Usually, I'd probably say at least 60% of the time it's a relic. But hoping for an autograph, we shall see what we pull out of this particular box. There's 24 packs in here. There's 14 cards per pack. And there's Koufax on the side. Be nice to find one of his autographs. There's Kershaw on the other side. And there's the bottom. And let's uh, break this open and see what we find. This is from our hobby case break. We'll be doing that Sunday night. I think I have five of these cases that we'll be able to open up. And these cases were not cheap. Last year at this time, a case of 2018 Tops Update was $750. I think I paid somewhere around there. Probably more after tax, but you know that's not bad, right? Well, now they're selling for about $1,300 for the exact same product. Just a different year, different set, and a lot more hype. And uh, inside every single pack, we have these um, silver packs, which is different this year. In previous years, Tops had taken these packs, and they had... Um, just kind of put them loose in the uh, packages that were sent out to breakers or card stores or whatever. So the card stores, a lot of them would just take the packs and sell them or whatever. But now Toss made sure that they go to the consumer. So these will go to you guys, which is nice. All right, so inside, here's what our pack looks like. Very orange, very fall-like feel to the pack, which is kind of cool, I guess, even though the Dodgers won't be experiencing much of the fall as they were eliminated by the Houston Astros. Not, they're not the Houston Astros. Sorry, I'm thinking about the Astros because their game just got rained out. Eliminated by the Washington Nationals um, not too long ago, about a week ago or so. There's all the odds and your no purchase necessary stuff. So let's get to ripping. Basically, the design is the same as 2019 Series 1 and 2. You have your 1984 design as an insert set in here. The main difference is you have some rookies in there that you didn't get to see before, like Cole Tucker. He was not in any of the other releases, so a lot of guys got called up mid-season are in here. Unfortunately, Jordan Alvarez is not in there. There's a nice Eloy Jimenez. Jordan Alvarez missed the cutoff supposedly by one day. So Tops has a uh, cutoff period that they have negotiated with the Players Association or whatnot. I believe that date is June 6th. If you take a look at all the players that were put into Topps Update and figure out their Major League debut, um, June 6th was the latest debut of anybody, and Jordan debuted the very next day, June 7th. So he's missing from this release. Of course, a lot of people are calling conspiracy and that Topps is holding him back for Series 1, but I do not know. There's uh, Yasiel Puig in his Indians uniform. That's another benefit of update. You have players that changed teams recently. There's a Puig, got traded over to the Indians from the Reds. And then you have these All-Star Game cards, which are pretty cool. Players that appear in All-Star Game. They also pay tribute to guys that participate in the Home Run Derby. There's a nice Ronald Acuna Jr. All-Star Game card and Alex Bregman. So a bunch of All-Star Game cards in that pack. I mean, that's cool because obviously the stars are more collectible to most people than just, say, some middle reliever that, I don't know, had joined a new team. Also, you get these, which are kind of a headache for breakers, figuring out which team gets that card. But usually I just divide them up. There might be like four or five of them. Just divide them evenly between the two teams. There's a Vladimir Guerrero Jr. That's his Topps Update rookie card. Of course, he was also in Series 2 with a no number on the back, a short print, which was a pretty nice one. One of the reasons why Series 2 is definitely a must-buy if you see it out there. Carter Keyboom rookie card. Yandy Diaz, who uh, was a hero in Game 1 of the last series, hitting two home runs. Charlie Morton and Blake Parker is the last one there. So some good rookie cards uh, in this set. I would say Vladdy Jr., obviously. 
just looking down the checklist, you got Kevin Biggio from the Blue Jays also. Nick Senzel, we'll be looking for him. Obviously, we're also looking for Tatis Jr. and Pete Alonso. We'll keep an eye out for those guys. Keston here is another nice one we'll be looking out for as well. So, uh, And then you have some of the guys that are, seem to be in every tops release, like, for example, Justice Sheffield seems to be literally in every single series of tops this year. There's a Michael Chavis rookie card from the Red Sox. That's a nice one. There's Neil Walker. Kind of weird to see him in any uniform other than the Buccos in his Marlins uniform. There's the family business. That's a little subset there. Vladdy Sr. I think also they have other father-son combos in that set, such as... Um, sorry, there's a wasp buzzing right above my head right now. Such as the junior, junior and senior combination of Griffey's. All right, let's see if we can do this and not get stung. Francisco Liriano back with the Buccos. There's the Biggio, Kevin Biggio rookie card. A lot of people are kind of high on him. Jeff McNeil in his all-star game uniform. Michael Brantley, 150. That's a nice little bonus, getting that gold stamp on there. Mike Moustakis is always solid. Needs to, he needs to get himself a long-term deal. Always seems to have trouble finding a team despite being able to club 30-plus home runs every year. All right, next pack. Looking for our autograph or our relic. We'll see what we find. Estribal Cabrera is still around. He's an old guy. And then we have good old rookie combos. It brings back memories of, uh, I don't know, like 89 Fleer and stuff when they would do a similar design like that. Jose Alvarado, that's a nice one. Tons of movement on his pitches. Frankie Lindor. And then what else we have here? Cattell Marte had a huge breakout season. Expect him to finish in the top 10 for MVP. And Cody Bellinger is going to be a top three finisher for MVP. And then Pete Alonso rookie card. This is likely, I believe there's three Pete Alonso rookie card variations in the base set. You have his base update card. You have his all-star game card. Then you have his pro debut card. Heck, you might even have his home run derby rookie card. There might be four Pete Alonso rookie cards in this. We shall see. That's the first one that we've seen so far. I know Topps definitely takes some of the better rookies and capitalizes on them by making uh, at least two cards in the sets. There's Mike Yastrzemski. A lot of people um, are PCing him. There's the rookie debut card. That's Yusei Kikuchi. And let's see what else we find. A nice Stan Musial 1960 Topps design. Iconic cards. Seems like they do that every year. They just call it something different, like cards your mom threw out or iconic cards or whatever. Paul DeYoung. All right, still looking for an auto. Also keep an eye out for other variations of the Pete Alonso rookie cards. All right, so in our next pack, DJ LeMahieu, huge surprise this year. Brian Reynolds, uh, probably even a bigger surprise. He was challenging for the batting title near the end of the season. I think he ended up hitting like 315 to 318 or so. So Randy Johnson entered the big unit. He was just down in D.C. this past uh, weekend signing. Didn't get to see him, though. Austin Riley, rookie card. Jordan Lyles, of course, no longer on the Pirates. Kind of missed the boat on that one. He got traded to the Brew Crew. And, of course, he still shows up in his Pirates uniform. But like I said, must have something to do with that cutoff date. All right, our next pack, another Austin Riley. There's his rookie debut card. So that's the second Riley rookie card that we've seen usually the rookie debut cards are worth about half what the base card is worth there's the tatis jr rookie debut rookie card pretty cool i still like them though there's vladdy carrera jr home run derby rookie card so you got at least probably three of his rookie cards in there maybe even four josh bell in the home run derby next pack kind of i don't know how i feel about that it's almost like rookie card saturation with Three or four different rookies, especially like guys that played in the Home Run Derby. Home Run Derby rookie card, All-Star Game rookie card, rookie debut rookie card, and base rookie card. All right, so let's see what else we've got. There's Jock Peterson. He put up a nice fight in the Home Run Derby. Shed Long rookie card. Came over from the Reds. And uh, I don't know, Shed Long kind of impressed me during the Pirates series. Didn't know he had that much power in that bat. I have to kind of keep him on my radar. Here's our next pack. We're about halfway through the box. Dallas Keuchel in his Braves uniform. Braves, of course, got unfortunately bounced out of the playoffs. I had a perfect bracket for the $250,000 challenge. Perfect bracket. 
except for the Braves and Cardinals. I picked the Braves to go on, and the Cardinals end up winning. Um, I did have the Nationals and Astros in the World Series. I talked about it in one of my live streams around that time. And um, I got the Astros winning it all and Garrett Cole being the MVP. If only the Braves would have won. I might be a lot richer in a couple weeks, but that's the way it goes. I've been looking at World Series tickets. There's a 3,000 strikeout card. That's a nice looking card. CC Sabathia. That's actually a really cool card. Love that picture. CC Sabathia. We'll see if he gets into the Hall of Fame or not. I think he probably will after maybe like, I don't know, five to 10 tries. Nick Senzel. A rookie card is a nice one. sabathi has got similar numbers to Mike Mucina, so that's why I think it's going to take him a while because it took Mucina a few turns to get in there. All right, here's our next pack. We got Edwin Diaz on the back. Eloy Jimenez rookie debut playing in April, it looks like. A bunch of uh, winter wear on underneath his uniform there. Kevin Biggio rookie debut. I've only found one Pete Alonso so far, and we still have not found our autograph or relic, which should hopefully be coming up shortly. There's Edwin Diaz, who really had a rough season with the Mets this year. If Edwin Diaz was, you know, able to put up similar numbers as he had in Seattle, you have to wonder if um, the Mets could have maybe snuck in the playoffs they really did come on there and there's our hit there jt rail muto that is the hit it's a relic i mean it's kind of cool because it incorporates a guitar for the all-star game it's game used or game worn memorabilia from the all-star game or at least from the all-star game workout or batting practice jt rail muto for the philadelphia phillies and i believe a lot of the relics usually an update incorporate the all-star game design somehow some way that's a pretty cool one so we are one to nothing, relics versus autographs. We'll try to keep track um, what that breakdown is. There's Oscar Mercado. Indians definitely needed him this year. He was a nice surprise for them. The Indians outfield was so weak at the beginning of the season, and he was uh, much needed out there until they reinforced their depth by getting the Franimal, Framil Reyes, and Yasiel Puig. Wade Miley had a nice season for the Astros. Keston Hira, rookie card. That's his base rookie, Joe Kelly. Walker Bueller Gold Cup. Who else? Roberto Clemente, 1984 design. In case you're wondering, I don't think I showed the backs of these yet. Typical tops back from 2019. Let me find, um, we'll do Tanner Roark. That's what it looks like. Gives you their pitching record. And no, their 2019 stats are not on here. It's still 18. Um, these were obviously probably printed at least a couple weeks ago. So no time to get the 2019 stats on there. We'll see those for the first time. In early February, when 2019 Top Series 1 comes out, I believe it's February 2nd, there's the Pete Alonso rookie debut. So we found the all-star one, and now we've got the rookie debut, and now we just need to find his base and possibly his home run derby card as well. Justin Verlander, nice card right there. There's Robbie Cano and Pete Alonso. There's the home run derby. So we've got three out of his four rookie cards, Pete Alonso Mania with this that might be part of the factor driving these boxes up so high you might ask yourself how much does the does a box of these cost usually in the past they've been about sixty dollars for a hobby box somewhere in there 60 65 bucks well now about 110 or so maybe even more everything's basically doubled from previous years with tops update part of that might be this year's rookie class with vladimir guerrero jr and pete alonso and Fernando Tatis Jr. and some of the other guys, too, are, you know, really highly touted, like Nick Senzel and Keston Hira and Eloy Jimenez. And part of that might just be the Topps Update hype that, I don't know, the kind of the legend of Topps Update grows every year with 2011 Topps Update just increasing in value as we go year to year and that Mike Trout rookie card just exploding in value. So I think some people don't want to miss out on that this time. There's a nice Michael Chavis rookie debut card waving to his family after his first game. All right, so we have about, looks like, seven packs left, including this one out of our original 24 packs. There's the Keston Hira rookie debut. It's a pretty... Nice looking card. And Nick Senzel just discussed these two guys not even a minute ago. Homer Bailey, 
Parallel card there. Home run and shutout. Season highlight for Thor. Syndergaard. There's Vladimir Guerrero Jr.'s rookie debut. Coming up out of the dugout there. Celebrating a, a W, it looks like. Maybe a walk-off. Lucas Giolito. Probable comeback player of the year. Austin Meadows had a huge breakout year. Wish the Pirates would have kept him. And uh, Frankie Montas was having a great year before he got busted for PEDs and was suspended for 80 games. And uh, putting a dagger into my fantasy season as he was like my best starter. All right, moving on to our next pack. We've got Matt Chapman on the back. It's probably a home run derby card. We shall see. There's Justice Sheffield, who's got a base card in seemingly every release of tops. CC Sabathia, 84. Design. I like those designs a lot. Christian Yelich, all-star game card. There's a Jose Abreu. He had a nice season. And Matt Chapman, all-star game. Down to five packs remaining for this tops update. We're going to be breaking tops update. Like I said, Sunday night, and I also have jumbo cases as well. We'll probably save those for the day or two after. I just didn't want to do it. so many um, tops update in one stream because otherwise it would be like an eight-hour stream. And uh, I learned my lesson after top series two when we were chasing all the Alonzos and stuff. I think I had like 10 cases of that, and it was like an eight-hour long break. So we'll divide up this one. Um, I put the Tops update on sale last night to my Patreon members. I don't know how many spots are left on that one just yet. If there are any spots remaining, I'll throw them down in the link to this description. And um, I'll be putting Jumbos up on Patreon within the next day or two for you guys. There's Hey, the Pirates actually get a card there. Steel City Bashers, Cervelli scores on a walk-off. Probably one of the only... Highlights of the Pirates season, a miserable season. I don't really think they even deserve a card. Cervelli, of course, no longer on the Buccos. He um, went over to the Braves for the end of the year. James McCann, Chris Paddock, rookie debut, and Josh Van Meter, a rookie card. So we've got three packs left. Let's see if we can find that base Alonso. We found every other Alonso. We already got our hits, so now it's just basically looking for that. Mitch Keller... One of the Pirates' top prospects. He kind of struggled this year. And we have an insert card coming up. I see that one. Who is it going to be? It's a Frank Robinson. Cool-looking card there. There's the back of it. I don't. It just says Established 1869. I guess maybe that's the name of the insert set. All right, Mookie Betts, all-star card, Zach Britton. Two packs left for Topps Update. You have to let me know what you think of Topps Update. Do you think it's worth the hype? Paying the... Uh, Paying the premium for this product, it definitely doubled in price. Do you plan on picking up any? I know from some people I've talked to in the hobby, they plan on buying a case or at least a box themselves and putting it away in their closet and waiting um, and seeing if it goes up just like um, some of the other Topps Update releases have, like 2013 updates been going up, 2014 update, 2018 updates been going through the roof. So I think a lot of people have seen that trend with Update and decided, you know what? I'm not going to miss the bus this year. I'm going to make sure that I at least, um, you know, buy a box of these so I can make a little bit of money as well. Let me know in the comments if you plan on doing that. Or maybe you plan on just boycotting Tom's Update because it costs so darn much and you're not going to buy any hobby boxes. I would say if you think the price is too much, just go out and buy yourself some retail Tom's Update. It's the same price. You can still go buy a blaster box for 20 bucks or a hanger, hanger pot pack i almost said pack box together but a hanger pack you get like what uh 30 no 36 cards or something like that for 10 bucks it might even be more than that vladdy jr rookie card it's the second one we've seen but yeah retail will be the same price if you feel like going out to walmart just make sure you don't buy any search packs make sure they haven't been tampered with because they're i have seen that recently in some of my trips out to Target and Walmart. So that is it for 2019 Tops Update. I hope you enjoyed the video, everybody. If you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Also, if you're new here, please subscribe. We do these videos every release day, and it seems like there's a new release every single Wednesday. At least there has been for like the last six months. So we do these videos. We also do case breaks and open a bunch of these boxes and see what we can find. So I hope you'll join us for the case break of this product on Sunday night probably start around 7 p.m. Eastern time or somewhere around there. So I hope you can join us. I also hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you all later.